A helicopter crash in Kyiv kills at least 18 people, including the country's interior minister and three children. Russia's Foreign Affairs Minister Sergei Lavrov accuses the West of starting a global hybrid war against Moscow. Former MEP involved in the EP corruption scandal Pier Antonio Panzeri admits guilt and signs a deal to share revealing details with authorities. Nurses in England have returned to the picket line as part of an unprecedented push to demand better pay. A helicopter crash in a Kyiv suburb has killed at least 18 people, including Ukraine's interior minister and three children. Denis Monastrysky and two other government officials were among the nine victims aboard the emergency services helicopter that crashed near a nursery in Kyiv's eastern suburb of Brovary. Kiev has confirmed that Monastrysky, who is the most senior Ukraine official to have died since the start of the war, was on his way to the front line. Monastrysky was in charge of the Ukrainian police and other emergency services. The regional governor said a total of 29 people were injured, including 15 children. Russia's foreign affairs minister has lashed out at the West's support for Ukraine in a series of fierce rhetorical blows during an hour-long news conference in Moscow. Speaking to reporters, Sergei Lavrov claimed the West was to blame for hostilities in Ukraine. What is taking place now in Ukraine is the result of many years of preparation by the United States and its allies to start a global hybrid war against the Russian Federation. In fact, nobody hides this. Just recently, Croatian President Milanovic said that this is NATO's war against Russia. It's a straightforward and honest statement. Lavrov also appeared to rule out peace talks, saying it was the West which had prevented Kyiv from negotiating. The West decides on behalf of Ukraine. It was them who forbade Zelensky to reach an agreement with Russia at the end of March last year, when such an agreement was ready. So the West decides, and decides for Ukraine without Ukraine. Russian President Vladimir Putin, seen here at a World War II commemoration in St. Petersburg, has long blamed the West for provoking the war in Ukraine. But as the West steps up military aid for Kyiv, the Kremlin's rhetoric is becoming increasingly hostile. The central figure in the corruption scandal at the European Parliament, the former MEP Pier Antonio Panzeri, has admitted guilt and signed a deal to share details with Belgian authorities. In exchange for a limited sentence, he will make substantial and revealing statements about the cash for influence corruption scandal linked to Qatar and Morocco. According to the Federal Prosecutor's Office, he will reveal information about the modus operandi of the criminal organization, the financial arrangements and the involvement of known and unknown persons. And this will include the identity of the persons he admits to having breathed. Some MEPs Hope this will help to accelerate the investigation. Pancheri's decision to cooperate with the Belgian authorities could open a window to speed up the unraveling of this huge scandal of corruption. Let's hope that we will have more names and we will go closer to the truth as soon as possible. Belgian media has reported that he allegedly confessed bribing with 120,000 euros another socialist MEP, Mark Tarabella. According to his lawyer, Panzeri has agreed to 1 million euros confiscation and a five-year suspension sentence, but he will just remain in prison for a maximum of a year. It is the second time in Belgian legal history that this kind of memorandum of repentance is signed. Aida Sanchez Alonso, Euronews, Brussels. Nurses in England have returned to the picket line as part of an unprecedented push to demand better pay amid soaring inflation. With negotiations between health unions and the government at a stalemate, thousands have walked out at hospitals across the country, 
in a series of stoppages planned for today and tomorrow. Health workers are calling for a pay rise of 5% above inflation, but their representatives have said they could compromise if the government gets directly involved in negotiations with employers. The strike heaps added pressure on the UK health service that's struggling to cope with post-Brexit staff shortages. Smart, unpredictable and off his rocker. These are some of the opinions prospective jurors have on Elon Musk. The billionaire and more recently Twitter CEO is facing a civil lawsuit. He is being sued by Tesla shareholders. The case centers around his tweets in 2018 saying he would take Tesla private. This trial takes us back in a time machine, uh, back before uh, Elon Musk owned Twitter, and this is mostly focused on his tweeting activities. While he's, you know, he's still uh, CEO of Tesla, but this has to do with um, basically, you know, he took Twitter private, and he at one point was floating the idea of he's going to take Tesla private. Potential jurors on Tuesday were questioned about their impartiality and by the end of the day, nine were selected. Musk has always maintained he has done nothing wrong and argues he cannot get a fair trial in San Francisco. He pushed for it to take place in Texas instead, where he moved Tesla's headquarters. But that was rejected. Opening arguments begin on Wednesday. In Belarus, the trial of the former presidential candidate Svetlana Tikhanovskaya and other key opposition figures is underway in the capital Minsk. They are charged in their absence with various offences including treason, extremism and undermining national security. Tikhanovskaya herself is in Davos at the World Economic Forum. First of all, I would call it a so-called trial because uh, it has nothing to do with justice in our country. So all these trials are revenge on those who are opposing uh, to the regime of Lukashenko or opposing to the war. So I'm not expecting anything. For sure, I uh, will be sentenced to years and years uh, you know, in uh, prison. The judge will give me so many years as he is ordered. The prosecutor's office accuses the leaders of the Coordinating Council of the Opposition of organising mass riots, seizing buildings and attempting a change of power in an unconstitutional way. The defendants face being sentenced to decades in prison. The process is being held behind closed doors and Tikhanovskaya says she can't access any material from the case. Other journalists and activists on trial in Belarus include the general director and editor-in-chief of the Tukbi Independent News Portal, Lyudmila Chekina and Marina Zolotova, as well as the heads of the Vyazna Human Rights Center, among them Nobel Peace Prize winner Alice Bialyatsky. Thousands of protesters march through Peru's capital, Lima, to keep up pressure against the government. At the same time, a counter demonstration with community groups and political parties rejecting the protests. The country is divided over its president, Dina Boluarte. It's five weeks since her predecessor, Pedro Castillo, was removed from office and arrested. Five weeks of deadly protests that began in early December. The president called on the demonstrators flooding into Lima to gather peacefully and calmly, even as they demand her resignation. With tensions mounting, many poor and indigenous demonstrators who'd come by bus to Lima were already making their presence felt in the capital on Tuesday. Philippine Nobel laureate Maria Ressa and her new site Rappler have been cleared of tax evasion charges. An emotional Ressa following today's verdict said, Today, facts win, truth wins, justice wins. The veteran journalist previously described the charges as politically motivated. Ressa was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize alongside a Russian journalist in 2021. She is the head of Rappler, which has earned a reputation for its in-depth reporting and tough scrutiny of the Philippines' former president, Rodrigo Duterte. The world's oldest person, French nun, Sister André, has died at the age of 118. Lucille Rondon was born in 1904 and took the name Sister André when she joined a Catholic charitable order in 1944. Sister André died in the early hours of Tuesday morning at her retirement home in France. Last year she survived contracting COVID-19. The world's oldest person is now Maria Brañas Moreira, 
who's aged 115 and lives in Spain.